Hi guys, Rob here from Decoded. If you've used Eevee before, you may have noticed that light sometimes seems to leak through into areas where it shouldn't be visible. This is a common problem caused by limitations to the way that Eevee saves out light and shadows as maps. Basically, Eevee assigns areas to either be lit or unlit based on what's directly visible to the light source without calculating in real world effects like light bouncing and refraction. If we uh, enable shadows on this scene, you're going to see the problem straight away. The light from outside should only be visible through the window, but we can see around the edge of the wall that it's also casting a light all the way around and even on this electrical socket next to the wall. Um, so the first thing that I want to do here is to just go up to the EV settings panel and I'm just going to open up shadows and we have an option here for cube size. What this basically is is um, EV saves which areas should be shadow and which should be lit based on like image texture. So we can just increase the resolution of this to something like 2000 pixels. And you can see we get much crisper shadows here because it's much higher resolution. You can also see that the light leak has significantly reduced, but it hasn't gone away entirely. I'm just going to turn on soft shadows here because they look a bit better. And we can see the shadows on the wall there are getting much better. But what we need to do to fix this problem is we need to select the light outside and whichever lights in our scene are gonna be causing these issues. And we need to go down to the object data panel, which is the one down here. You can see we've already enabled shadows, but if we open up the drop down menu here, we have an option for contact shadows. What contact shadows does is it basically adds certain elements from the screen, whatever's visible to the camera it adds that to the projection of where the light and shadow should be. So if we just turn that on, then it hasn't made much of a difference, right? So what we're going to need to do is change the distance. The distance basically is going to project this um, plane onto the shadow map of anything that's around it based on what's on screen. So what I mean is if we just turn this up and if we put it on point two, we can have, we can see that we've still got a little bit of light leak over here just on the TV and the wall. So we're going to change that to 0.3. And now the light leak is gone. This method is basically the only way that I know of to get rid of light leak, but it does have one limitation that you need to be aware of. And that's because it's working out what's on screen at the time. If you like doing animation or something, you need to be aware that as elements go off screen, they'll stop adding to the contact shadow. So if I just pull this across, you can see we have a little bit of light leak there just starting to appear on the left hand side of the screen. And then as we pan the camera across again, that will disappear. So it is something you need to be aware of when you're doing things like animations, but in general, it's almost always gonna look better if you have contact shadows turned on. If you like this video guys, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to Decoded. I have a lot of new content on the way, videos up every week. See you around for the next one guys.